So why did we do this? Because we want to find out what the Hamiltonian is, okay? So we did this because we want the Hamiltonian of a charge in a, in a time independent electromagnetic field. Why do we want the Hamiltonian? Because the Hamiltonian gives us the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so this is the motivation for writing the equation of motion like this. Because what is an equation of motion? An equation of motion is nothing but an Euler Lagrange equation for some Lagrangian for the system. So the let's write the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian of a particle, of a charged particle, in an electromagnetic field is essentially the Lagrangian which gives as its Euler Lagrange equation this equation, right? So the Lagrangian is pretty simple and you can verify that the Euler Lagrange equations is indeed the one that we uh, wrote down. It's going to be one half m x dot squared minus q phi plus q over c v dot a. Okay. So this is the Lagrangian that yields the Euler Lagrange equation that we just saw. So you can show this, right? Show that L gives rise to the Lorentz force law. Okay? This is just a very, you know, you should be able uh, to do this. Sir, I have a question regarding this. Yes. Okay, so let's say we we have no magnetic field, so B is zero, so which essentially means that the curl of A would equal to be equal to zero, right? So, yeah. so we can have a function A, uh, yeah, I mean, can't we have a non-zero A in, in the case where magnetic field is zero. Um, Nahi, the whole point of this lecture is to get to that point. Oh, okay, sorry. The whole idea behind the Bohm era, Aronoff Bohm effect that we are going to get to either today or the next day is to exactly show that that is the case. That there are important physical situation in which the magnetic field is zero, but the but the gauge field is non-zero and the quantum particle is sensitive to the gauge field, even when there is no magnetic field in the vicinity, in that region, okay? That's a very, very important question. That is exactly what we want to understand or, or demonstrate. And there is, you know, Aronov is very old, but you know, he should have gotten the Nobel Prize for that. It is such a beautiful effect. So is not he still alive? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met Aronoff several times. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's still active actually. Uh, he's he he must be in his nineties, but you know he's still uh, or eighties at least. He's still chugging along. Yeah, he's a, a frequent visitor to the Permit Institute. That's how I met him. So every time he came, he would come and give talks to the Sci students, and you know. 
He's just a really, really great guy. All right, so let's carry on. Uh, so that's a great question, and that's going to be essentially where we want to go. Okay, so uh, now let's ask the question, what happens to L under a gauge transformation? Okay. Because uh, since, you know, these guys are not invariant quantities, they change under gauge transformation, then the Lagrangian is not unique, right? If the Lagrangian is not unique, then um, my Lorentz force law is not unique. And therefore, we are in trouble because, you know, uh, what, what happens? Now, you can show very easily that under a gauge transformation, the Lagrangian changes by a total time derivative. Okay, but see that the action is nothing but the uh, the time inter integral of the Lagrangian, where you know, uh, and therefore total time derivatives, you know, and we we uh, discard the boundary terms that arise from uh, from uh, from the action. So total time derivatives are something that is not going to be relevant for the Euler Lagrange equation. So because you know when we are when we are talking about the action, what do we see? That you know the equation of motion, classical equation of motion is given by Hamilton's principle. Hamilton's principle is the principle of least action. And there, what we do is that we are taking variations of our paths, but those paths go to zero at the boundaries, at t equals to ti and t equals to tf. And therefore, you can show that that leads to any total derivative in time term that you add to the Lagrangian irrelevant to the equation of motion. So the equation of motion does not change under a gauge transformation, okay? So the equation hmm. of motion is gauge invariant, even though the Lagrangian isn't, okay? That could make an excellent uh, problem for either an exam or an assignment. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay. So now that we have the Lagrangian, the Hamiltonian is just one step away. So for the Hamiltonian, we need to first find the momentum pi, and the momentum is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. I hope you're, it's clear what I mean by taking the derivative with respect to a vector. And I, I mean that I'm taking like a component by component derivative. And if you do this, then the momentum, the kinetic momentum, this is called the kinematical momentum. Is P plus Q by C A. So this means that there is also momentum contained in the electromagnetic field. It's not just the uh, momentum of the particle, the, the, the mechanical momentum. So then we can, from there, we can say what the Hamiltonian is. Well, the Hamiltonian is nothing but P dot X dot 
minus L. This is the famous Legendre transformation, which you uh, all learned about in StatMech. And if you do it one line of algebra, it gives you 1 over 2m. Instead of the momentum, you have p minus q over ca, the kinematical momentum. And then the potential is q5. Okay, so this is my Hamiltonian. 